Hello friends, this video on why do we fall ill part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the factors which affect health. What are the different factors which actually affect our health? So the first factor is social environment plus physical environment. What do you think I'm talking about when I say social plus physical environment? Well, when I'm talking about the social environment, I'm talking about our surroundings where we actually live. For example, if you compare somebody who is living in a metro, a big city, with another person who is living in a small town and again if you compare yourself with another person who is living in a very small village do you think that the social environment for these three persons are all the same they are not right because somebody who is living in a big city he is having all the facilities around him he is having nice infrastructure cleanliness around him at the same time he is facing a lot of pollution whereas somebody who is living in a small village maybe the, it, it is not that organized maybe it is uh, it, it is bit pollution free because you don't have so many vehicles there and you have a lot of greenery but at the same time maybe it is a little clumsy and a little crowded and uh, you might have garbage thrown here and there. So the social environment also plays an important role in your health, right? What do I mean when I talk about the physical environment? Physical environment generally talks about the uh, natural phenomenon which happens in the environment. For example, we often hear of news of floods, earthquakes, cyclones or heavy rains. So don't you think that all these things also affect our health? For example, due to floods, we often see that so many people actually lose their lives. There are so many people who get injured physically, right? So the physical environment also plays an important role, the climatic conditions, right? So the social and physical environment together plays or together affects our health. The next factor is cleanliness, individual as well as public cleanliness. So when I talk of <coughs> individual cleanliness, what all comes to our mind? So when I talk of individual cleanliness, we can think of all these things. For example, washing hands before we eat something because we are going out, we are doing so many things, we are touching so many different objects. So maybe there are germs or there are things in our hands which are not good for our health so it is always good to wash our hands properly before we eat something so again when i talk of individual cleanliness we should maintain hygiene so where do you think we can maintain hygiene in our individual life for example we should try to keep our house neat and clean we should try to keep the kitchen very neat we should keep whatever we cook we should keep them covered so that insects or um, something else doesn't fall into them right so we should maintain those kind of hygiene at our home again we should clean ourselves properly that means when we take bath, we should take bath regularly and that too we should wash our body properly so that our body is neat and clean, right? So these are some of the small things which we can take care of when we talk, when we think of our individual cleanliness. Now, when it comes to public cleanliness, what are the things that should be taken care of? Well, when I talk of public cleanliness, for example, the garbage. The garbage should not be thrown here and there, right? So the garbage should be every, if every person, if everybody maintains his individual cleanliness, maintaining the public cleanliness becomes little easier, right? So in, I've seen many places, not only the small towns or villages, even in big cities, there are places where you will see that people throw garbage on roadside. And it is in an open space where people just come and keep throwing their garbage. So there is a lot of dirt there. So so many insects, birds will come and they'll start picking up things from there. And it is like, it'll smell badly. So it is a horrible place to live. So if these, if you are living in these kind of localities, the tendency that you will, your health will get affected will be more, right? So the garbage should be properly collected. 
and accumulate it at a place so that it does not cause pollution or so that it does not affect the people residing in that locality right so what we can do is everybody in their house can pack their garbage in a in a bag and then that can be collected by the people the municipality people who come and then they can collect it and then they can throw it at an appropriate place right similarly the when i talk of public cleanliness the uncleaned drains should be looked after so you can see that there are so many drains where water keeps flowing but nobody maintains it so that water will have all dirt in it it will smell badly it will have so many insects mosquitoes and flies hovering around here and there so these are the places where from where diseases actually arise so there should be no stagnant water collected anywhere because wherever you have stagnant water you have mosquito breeding there now more mosquitoes so those mosquitoes can cause many severe diseases right so these are some of the things which you, we can take care of when we talk of cleanliness both at individual level as well as public level the third thing is good economic conditions why do you think that good economic conditions also affect our health now when i talk of health health will be good only when we have everything in a proper quantity we should eat properly to be to have good physical health now in order to eat proper food and in order to get good nourishment what do we need we need money right if you want to buy vegetables or fruits or pulses you need money right you will not get it for free so from where will you get that money in order to earn that money you need to work right so good economic conditions if somebody who is very poor he cannot afford good food for himself so if he is not eating proper food it is very obvious that his health is getting affected right so good economic conditions is extremely important in order to have a good health the next one is social equality and harmony as i said the human beings are social animals right so if we live in a society where there is lot of distinction between rich and poor so what will happen it will depress the poor if there is too much of distinction between a boy and a girl if people say that boys are good and girls are not good if you are living in that kind of a society what will happen the girls will stay depressed they will start feeling bad so their mental health will be affected right so social equality should be maintained everybody should be treated equally be it the rich or the poor or be it a, a, a man or a woman so everybody should be given or should be treated equally and there should be harmony between people so if there are fights if there are arguments be between people so what will happen we will lose happiness right so let us take this example suppose if you are living in a society where you have four neighbors right so the four families are staying together so which is a better situation to live in that the four families are very friendly with each other they keep coming and going to each other houses they keep inviting them on festivals so that is a good scenario or this is a good scenario where they don't talk to each other they always uh, argue with each other they keep fighting amongst themselves so in which such scenario do you think that people will be happier people will be in a good mental and social health the one which has lot of harmony right so in order to be in good health both mentally and socially social equality and harmony also plays a very important role right so these are some of the broad factors which affects our health social and physical environment individual and public cleanliness good economic conditions social equality and harmony many of us often misunderstand being healthy as being disease free many people think that if i am not suffering from any disease that means i am healthy but as i mentioned in the definition of health that it is not always the scenario that if we are disease free that doesn't mean that we are healthy let us look at some of the examples so being disease free does not necessarily mean to be healthy right let us look at some of the examples let us look at this guy what does he look like he look like a sportsman right so for this player 
what do you think that healthy would mean to be maybe this player thinks that as long as he is fit enough he is active enough to play well he is healthy as long as nothing is bothering his energy he feels that he is healthy enough but maybe there are some problems which is maybe some physical problems only are going in his body maybe he is getting some skin infection somewhere but since it is not bothering him so he is fine he feels that being a player what he needs he needs lot of energy he needs fitness he needs to be active and if he is having all that he calls himself to be healthy right similarly if you look at a dancer for a dancer he should be able to stretch her hands and legs properly she should have good energy in her so if she is having all those things she feels that she is healthy similarly for a singer maybe if his lungs are good enough his breathing capacity is good enough he feels that he is healthy again if you think of an old person maybe this old lady if she is able to walk if she is able to go to her neighbor friends chat with them come back on her own and she can do little bit work on her own for example she can prepare her own food she can serve her own food she feels that she is healthy enough but maybe all of these people are suffering from some other kind of problems maybe one of them is having some tooth problem but since it is not giving him any pain or it is not causing him any uncomfortable so he feels that he is healthy right so when i talk of being healthy healthy means that the person has to be physically fit the person has to be mentally happy and the person also needs to be socially satisfied so this health is always a combination of physical mental and social health if all these three things are there then you can say that a person is healthy so this is a myth that be, being disease free is being healthy it is not actually like that thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again